yo quisiera hablarte del amor de Cristo, pues en él hay un amigo fuerte y fiel. Por su gracia transformó mi vida entera, lo que en esta vida soy lo debo a él. Nadie pudo amarme como Cristo, es incomparable su amistad. Solo Él pudo redimirme del pecado por su amor y su bondad. Oh, bravo. Cada día viene a darme nuevo aliento, a mi corazón infunde dulce paz. Mas no sé por qué Él ha venido a salvarme hasta que en el cielo pueda ver su paz. Nadie pudo amarme como Cristo, es incomparable su amistad. Solo Él pudo redimirme del pecado, por su amor y su bondad. ¡No! ¡Hola! 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 My name is Rose Robin. Good morning, how are you? I'm very, I'm very well, thank you. Is your name Paul Nabor? Yeah. It's a pleasure to meet you. Hello, my name is Scott. Yeah, I'm Tim. <laughs> and I understand that you are one of the three kings and an amazing musician, Belizean musician, historical. Yes, I, I'm one of them. My partner, the other king, he died. Oh. He died. I'm the one now here. And uh, Mr. Florence, you miss. I'm happy for living these years because I'm 80, 85, born 1928, 26th of January, and now I'm, I'm 85. So I decided not to go nowhere again because my body can't take that place. That place is too cold, man. It's not for us. For old people, it's not for old people. It's for young guys. Which country are you talking about? Oh, you, you want to see me? I went, I went to, way down to Malaysia. Oh, wow. Germany, France, Italy, England, America, I went all about the place. You know all the places I went to? Oh. oh, wow, that's really cool. All the places I went to. You went with Andy Palacio in 2007 yes. on the Garifuna Collective? Yes, I was the first one that started going out with him. Uh -huh. this trouble, start trouble when I was 18 years old. This is my guitar that I travel with. Mm. This guitar, hard, I had this guitar for 54 years. When I look up on this, I see three guitar. So I ask the lady, what about this guitar for seven? How much for one? Twelve dollars. Give me one. The lady tell me, where you got guitar from? <laughs> I bought it. So you can't play guitar, you just want to do like play the children. I said, because I want to learn it. Mm -hmm. I couldn't get it. But I didn't know that these fingers and this guitar had cards. I was just playing like that, trying to play it, but it is not so. So I went to one of them and said, have me excuse, mister. I said, what can I do for you? I said, I come to give you a trouble. Please sell this guitar for me. He said, you want to learn guitar? I said, yes, sit down. Ask my lady, see me. Go away, go away, go away. I don't want to hear guitar. I don't want to see no drunken no man. I told her, because I play my guitar, trying to learn guitar, I will be, I will be a drunkard. She said, that's where the guitar people go. They drink a lot of rum. I go away, go away. Oh my goodness. <laughs> my little daughter now, she ran to me and she loved this guitar too. So I picked this little girl, guitar this here. <laughs> my daughter here, I'm going home. <laughs> Three days. She didn't see me, she, she, she didn't see her daughter too. So I tell my mom, mom, I'm going to be, I'm going to leave this little girl in your home. I went for 15 years. I didn't see this little girl. I didn't see my mother. 
I went to Pekin, Florence Pekin. Well, I lived there for three years. I milked my little five cents out of, of this guitar, not working for nobody, just playing my guitar. As in the morning, I would get a seat on the table and a little glass, and I put it there and I sit down and start. All kind of songs that I knew. When I look in the little glass, it falls a little money. If you eat and don't have money, you look good. Because a millionaire is a serious man. His life is danger. Everybody, if you go on the street, everybody look at you this way. Oh, he's a millionaire. Let's walk down. Is your grandson? Is it possible to come and have a tour of the? Trip if you want to have a tour, then Juan will be starting a tour. I can take you upstairs. Okay, thank you. Hi, Juan. You, you get can, something. You can join the like table. I'll get some cocoa bean for you. Hello. Thank you. Hello. Mm -hmm. Those pieces are often referred to as cacao nibs. The cacao nibs can either be somewhat a super dark peanut. Now, let's see what it tastes like. Mm. Feel yeah, free. Sure. Now, if we're going to make our own chocolate, then we need to shell those beans also. We being here, the only Maya chocolatier in the country of Belize. All of what we offer are crops grown on our property, ingredients. Uh, there is no such thing as artificial flavorings we use rather harvested on our farm. We have been living organic for the past thousands of years ago. How long has this farm been in your family? Generations, as far as I can recall, five. Five generations? Five generations. You're Mayan? Yes? 100%. 100%. And I, can I ask you what tribe of Mayan or what uh, language uh, you speak? We speak, well, I personally speak both of the Mopan, uh -huh. FG dialect. However, in Belize we have some three of the dialects being spoken. That is of the Mopan, FG and the Yucateca. Now in general we have some 26 dialects within the Maya language. For example, you want to say thank you. For you to say thank you in Maya FG, you would say to Re. Thank you. In Mopan, you say bo tick. Wow, very different. Of course. <laughs> Our classification being Maya was only around the 1500s when the early explorers, said to be the Spanish, didn't understand our dialect. They heard the Yucatecan speaking ma, ma yan, ma yani, ma iwel, mashkoi, ma yan. Mayan. What do those two words mean? Mayan? No. None. We don't know. We don't have. 
No. <laughs> Forest 2500 BC, before Christ. Chocolate was already in use by our ancestors. Cacao was native around this area. But not anyone could have drunk chocolate because of the fact you consider yourself drinking your own money. These were currency. Oh, wow. For us, money was literally growing on trees. That in the early days of the New World exploration, they came across the southern civilization of the Incas. They invented counterfeiting of the cacao beans. They did not grow cacao. Their soils were alkaline soils mm -hmm. and they were on desert. Resulting, they started to trade with the Maya. And for them to get cacao as in currency, they got to come get it from the Maya. Mm -hmm. They have clay, they have ashes, mm -hmm. they have mm -hmm. char, they have beeswax. Mm -hmm. You mix everything together, you get something looking just like a bean. Only persons that drink chocolate were the royalties. And if you drink something that's unusual, you go, huh, this is not chocolate. Where did it come from? There is always a form of tracking the route or the origination of this bean. And upon finding the origination of that false bean, the form of human sacrifice performed to be a capital punishment. Wow. So now turning into a fine liquid chocolate. Mm. It's really drying, it dries out your tongue. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Yeah. But it's already kind of sweet, it's already really sweet. <laughs> the whole idea is that our chocolate that we work with, we don't work with um, bean to bar as I said. We start on our farm. So we select the cacao beans we work with. We're concerned about the food that we produce for the consumers, that you get actually the health um, benefits from it. And we are only concerned about educating our families, our friends, our community, the world if possible, so that only so doing we can make this world a better place for the next generation. So melting pretty quick because I just made them. That's with a little milk. Yep. Thank you. The rest are without. That is dark. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm. <laughs> that is orange. This is spicy. And coconut. Mmm. Oh, it's delicious. Oh, it's just so good. Thank you. <laughs> so how would they would the chocolate stay um, solid, or would it always be in liquid form? You whip it. You whip the chocolate. You cause the oils to come on top. That's the cacao butter in there. You take the cacao butter to the bottom becomes solid. Because you do not have any butter in there. Just one solid block. Right. So you, you have, did you say 10 acres of? 10 acres of cacao. Cacao trees at 300 trees per acre. Mm -hmm. Per acre we harvest 500 pounds of cacao beans per acre. If you estimate the value of cacao versus a pound of steak, one pound of cacao powder equivalents the value of one pound of steak. Nevertheless, one cow needs you one acre of tropical rainforest to be cut down into grass. In our case, you have 300 trees. These 300 trees under diversified cultivation system, you harvest right through. However, latest research shows that one American citizen consumes over one pound of chocolate into various candy bar forms per year. <laughs> now, how many mouths can we feed from one acre at 500 pounds per acre? The tropical rainforest is the lungs of the planet. If it's the lungs of the planet, what happens if we clear cut everything? You're cutting away your, your things that produces oxygen. Exactly. The more we fight against nature, the more we lose. Nature always wins. That's right. Exactly. Always. That's right. Um, this is our little machine now. Uh, before we use the grinding stone, yes. but we cannot um, keep our demand on that, so we're using this. Mm. Mm. This is that beautiful. So 
of the Toledo Cocoa Boys Association. It's fair trade and all the farmers, they have been trained, they are the ones trained the farmers how to take care of their farm, not to apply any chemical, and they have like field extensionists that goes in the farm and teaches the farmers how to ferment, how to dry, how to plant, how to prune, how to clean, everything. So we want to say um, yeah. welcome to our farm and um, you will note that here on this farm we do not have large scale or a monoculture practice mm -hmm. rather as we go along we keep on planting if we plant in rows on a slopey area we are entertaining erosion to happen and as a result there is a need for an interlocking technology an interlocking technology will cause whatever problems as in erosion to happen will take care of itself all natural. Do this color. The hybridization aspects of cacao is meant to be for mass production. Yet when it is being introduced back into the natural world, it came in with fungus. However, we did not waste it no time. We began intercropping. We planted a hybrid, we plant two creators. One hybrid, two creators. And so doing, there is this cross pollination happening naturally. I want Thank you. Mm. Just suck on the external part mm. of the bean. Mm. Mm. You experience the flavors of what? Citrus? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, like passion, f passion fruit. Something like that. Mm -hmm. Something like banana. Mm -hmm. Somewhat like mango. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Some people say it's like papaya. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. This is all spice. Uh -huh. The all spice. Um, it's quite interesting. It grows all over, all naturally. And if you take a leaf like this and you smell it, you can actually experience the outspice flavor within it. Smell it. And if you chew the leaf, you will note an immediate reaction, somewhat anesthetic. Mm -hmm. Chemistry has been done for the past thousands of years also. And resulting simply by taking the leaf, boiling it down, evaporating the waters, taking out the organic materials, skimming out the stains, you're left with a teeny liquid. <laughs> the teeny liquid, you slice one part of the body with a piece of object, and you drip in that liquid, you have anesthetic reactions. Mm -hmm. These leaf color ants could be one of a major problem to farmers. Mm -hmm. And leaf color ants, they do not digest the leaves they cut. Simply, they cut the leaf, they take it into their city, and they agriculture they're growing a fungus and it's the fungus that what they feed on now what we have done is that these bananas they release a plastic sticky substance planted right on top of the city oh, wow. the root structure will be releasing these plastic sticky substance the drips that will be dropping from the roots will be dripping on top of the leaves that the ants will be carrying and when we lead them towards starvation, what happens? They move. When they move, they leave behind a ton of compost for us. Resulting, mm -hmm. this tree mm -hmm. is not benefiting from it. Uh, they smell like blackberries. From that tree. They are Delicious. referred to as bay cedar. One of them, it may be not be bad for you. But if you chew on one or two or more, leads you towards constipation. It's one of the primary ingredients for the straws, for making baskets and whatever straws materials they can use. You can also harvest this part. Ah. This is like any hearts of palm. Oh, oh wow. And they're edible. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh Juan, you're a lucky man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's <beautiful. laughs> This is our world, this is what we enjoy. If people are interested in coming and coming on a tour, where would they go? Would they go on the internet or would they call you? Yes, they can go on the internet, a website that is www.ishkakaomayabelizianchocolate.com You can visit us on the Facebook. We have a Facebook page, um, facebook.ishkakao. Okay. And uh, we also have the TripAdvisor account that is created by the many visitors that has come by and had learned that our tours, our operation, what we have to offer is 
their highlights of their trip, they also post it on TripAdvisor. And what's your name, sir? Juan Cho. Juan Cho. Mm -hmm. How do you spell Cho? C H O, the first three letters in chocolate. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Brush flops, goggle and kit me. You couldn't spit it fresh, then your boy with lipstick. A weed, what I need is a light of this drink, a this beat, a pen, and a pen. Bukut. Bukut. Or a local name they call it as Stinking Toe. Mm. Stinking Toe? Stinking Toe. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. It's kind of cheesy. Iron. Very good for iron. Mm -hmm. Caramel cheesy taste. <laughs> wow, that's really nice. It's very good. Mm -hmm. It's iron, iron. Very good for iron. It's almost like a date. Mm -hmm. There is a poison wood tree. They're also close by a gumbo limbo tree. So where it's always a negative, there's a positive. This is a gumbo limbo tree. Right, because it's appealing back. Yeah, you can identify that almost immediately. Now, if we go closer here, we'll show you a poison wood tree. Is it right here? Is a poison wood tree looking at? It's friendly, touching externally. But the minute you slice this tree, the skin or the bark, it releases a sap. And it's the sap that what affects you. How does it affect you? Well, it will cause you to some serious burning. And those burning, the only remedy that is known to us is the gumbo limbo. Take one part of the gumbo limbo and you put it right where the burn is. Prickly yellow. Prickly yellow. Prickly yellow tree. Okay. Um, it has been used by our um, grandparents. For example, you have um, those big rashes, they call them bile. They would just come out of your body. This part, you break it and you kind of um, puncture the area and you release out the pus that it contains and for some reason it might have some properties that helps within the controlling of such um, infection. All right. So prickle yellow. This one is bay leaf. This is another palm that many lodges and resorts fancy them to use for their thatch roofs. This is a baby mahogany that is growing. This is the national tree of Belize. Uh -huh. Now it's also quite interesting that they're growing and if we were to practice slash and burn agriculture all of this thing would have been cut down and burnt and look at the amount of plants we're Baby burning sheets. down mm -hmm. these ones are called rosewood uh -huh. now rosewood takes you at least 60 years before they can mature now a 60 year old rosewood we have the chinese um community business people that are coming in and are craving for rosewood and of course there has been going lots about the illegal logging of rosewood now what are we doing in terms of after all these rosewood are gone how many people are replanting in our case we're not taking waste of our time we're trying our best to plant even though we did not cut a single one of them nevertheless we're taking our time to replant the snake, snake bite um, remedy this guy here so this is, is a, kind of is a, a cockspur. The cockspur. Or cow horns, because you will note the spikes. They are like cow horns. And it's a kind of acacia. Yes. And you will notice there are these ants moving up and down it. Uh -huh. You don't want to get a bite from these ants. Uh -huh. These guys are very, very ferocious. And when they give you a sting, it's like a scorpion bite. Wow. Or sting. And um, it's just quite interesting. They live right within the horns, uh -huh. resulting whenever there is a person experiencing a snake bite. To have that remedy uh, immediately is to look forward to where you can find this tree. You dig one part of the root and that's what you chew on. That helps you, controls the beat of your heart, 
causing the venom not to enter into your system much faster until you can reach first aid um, requirements to an anti-venom shot which you can find at the nearest health center here here lies the home to many um, monkeys um, animals birds the toucan they come and feed around this area it's very interesting in here bird lovers who want to see or experience the type of migratory species um, they can come and experience it here and of course researchers who want to learn about plants soils decomposition of organic materials organic farming um, and more chocolate could be done here also our work here at Ishikakao Maya Belize in chocolate is simply not the benefit just for one it's the benefit for all what we think is for us to create another opportunity for our farmers to learn that there is a better way than of having to clear cut this beautiful forest and light it up with fire for growing one crop you can grow many more crops without having to cut down this beautiful forest you have your medicinal plants you eliminate yourself from having to pay um, modern medications um, which you cannot afford you generate income from it to afford to send your children to school so they can have an opportunity to come back and teach others so the whole idea is that we're creating an educational um, system for not only our farmers but also our students within the elementary level and of course learning appreciating ourselves what have been left behind by our ancestors our grandparents they were able to live their lives without um, all of these uh, fancy stores that we buy synthetic products we can do it our parents were able to do it why can't we do it and that's the positive uh, message I have to send across and that we encourage our local Belizeans to come and experience what we have and that if you have nothing to do out there there's something to be done here in the natural side of our planet as visitors who want to experience nature at its fully come here we really welcome you Police Guatemalan Border Road project. The upgrade of this road is being carried out by the government of Belize with the financial support from Kuwait Fund of Arab Economic Development. Building this this road here. Hi. And before you lived here, and there was no road. Yes. At all. Yeah. Because we used to come and live here from long, long time. From what do you think of the road? It's already here. Yeah. But what do you what do you think? Uh huh. So they walk to school. So it's dangerous. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry? Oh, buy baskets? No, thank you though. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, this is Rio Blanco National Park here. Yeah. And you have to just go down and on your right and you could enter by the river. Okay. Yeah. Jesus! Ow! 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 Ow
Okay. Yeah, what the hell? Let's have some bees or something. I don't care what anybody So is the is the African bee indigenous to here? Like is it from here? My and people say that you know they, I don't know. Yeah, but I think they just came in. They are very dangerous. A lot of our own people here since I'm living here. By chance if it don't happen all the time, especially the uh, horses, especially if you find the bee, horse. yeah, the bee, those bee when they come, yeah, lucky and run. But people say that anytime since you are close by the river, if you can't get jump into the river and you, you know, they wouldn't bother at you. I will make you fish all and men, fish all and men, fish all and men. I will make you fish all and men if you fall on me. <laughs> if you fall on me, if you fall on me. I will make you fish all and men if you fall on me. It's a funny array. <laughs> My name is Emmet Young. I'm originally from a little village called Gales Point, Manatee. Now I live in Punta Gorda town. Um, I have a jump school here in Punta Gorda, the Maroon Creole Jump School. And I am a jump maker, uh, also a jump teacher, teach kids to play the jump and teach them how to make jump. You can either buy jump from us in a big quantity. It would help to promote our jump school and help to keep the kids off of the street because I work with the youth stem. I teach them to make the jumps and to play the jumps. And so if you buy jump from us, you are uh, automatically giving the kids a job because the youths, uh, you know, they make the jumps and sell them and this is a way how they make income and through the Maroon Creole Jump School.